Let me read to you a passage from the sixth chapter of St. Luke, verses 27 to 38. It's the Gospel for the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear I say, Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you, to the person who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withdraw even your tunic. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed down, shaken together and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. That is from the sixth chapter of St. Luke, verses 27 to 38. In that gospel passage today, Christ presents us with not a somewhat unattainable ideal, but his requirements, if we wish to be his disciples. He requires of us that we strive to have hearts like that of our Heavenly Father. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. It is to Jesus that we must look, if we are to know what our Heavenly Father is like, because, as St. Paul says, Christ is the image of the unseen God. He who sees me, our Lord told his disciples at the Last Supper, sees the Father. Our Lord tells us in our passage today that we are to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, to bless those who curse us, and to pray for those who mistreat us. We are not to condemn. We are to forgive and we are to give liberally. In this way, he tells us, we shall be children of our Father in heaven. Now, this does not mean that we should allow evildoers to proceed in their wrongdoing, but it does mean that God wants our hearts, our thoughts, our words, and our deeds to be like his own. And our Lord tells us that our Father in heaven loves the wicked, now that would strike the average religious person, the person of most of the great religions of the world, at the very least as being unrealistic, but in the sight of God it is not. Christ's command that we love those who wrong us is a new revelation. It is a new commandment, and he pointed to himself as the model. Love one another as I have loved you, he told us, and he himself forgave and loved his enemies. Now that this is not just an ideal but a requirement is indicated in the fact that there are divine sanctions involved. Our Lord warns that the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. If we are ever to live such a life as our Lord requires, there are two essential things we need to appreciate. Firstly, the foundation of such a life is a clear notion of the character and nature of God. As Pope Benedict reminds us in his first encyclical, God is love. That is the teaching of our Lord's words in today's Gospel and of the New Testament. 
And in the light of the New Testament, we can see it as the teaching of the Old Testament too. God has revealed himself to be a God rich in mercy and compassion. His almighty power is manifested in his mercy and love. If we are ever to appreciate this, all our lives we must ponder and pray over God's revelation of himself. Our tendency will be to attribute to God what we experience in ourselves and in others, and to project our own limitations and those of others onto him. If only we can truly discover the love of God for us, and for all men. What a difference it would make to our lives. If only we can come to appreciate the enormity of our sins, the seriousness of our inherited fallen condition, and the scale of God's love for us. God our Father will then be a living model for all our thoughts, all our words, and all our actions. If then, we constantly live in his loving presence, knowing that he sees all that we do, say and think. He himself, our loving Father, will be our constant inspiration. We will be drawn to think as he thinks, to want what he wants, and to love as he loves. So we need to form our image and impression of God on the basis of his revelation as transmitted in the scriptures and in the church's living tradition. And that process will take time, involving prayer, reading and a true commitment. God is love. Secondly, we need to cultivate detachment of soul, a true poverty of spirit. We cannot hope to be able to love in a pure and disinterested way, if we want various things for ourselves in the process. If our heart is attached to riches, to honours, to poverty, to rather to power and to pleasures, then whenever these are threatened or denied us, to a greater or lesser extent, our reaction will be one of anger and desire for revenge. How will we be able to love our enemies and do good to them, how will we be able to bless those who curse us and pray for those who mistreat us if we are attached to the things that they are denying us? The key to loving as Christ loves us, the key to being able to do good to those who harm us, the key to being merciful as our Heavenly Father is merciful, is to grow in poverty of spirit for the love of Christ. We need to empty our hearts of all that is not God or not related to God. If our hearts are empty of every attachment except whatever is pleasing to God, we shall have it in us to love according to the mind of Christ. This is the meaning of our Lord's teaching that blessed are the poor in spirit for they shall inherit the land. So let us resolve to love others as Christ sets forth in today's Gospel. The key to achieving this will be appreciating from the heart that God is love and striving for a Christ-like detachment from all that is not according to the mind of God.